Good evening, everyone, and happy 4th of July to you and yours. And no matter what part of Alaska you're watching from, uh, hopefully you're enjoying your 4th of July holiday and having a pleasant time in your part of Alaska tonight. 1-800-472-0391 is your Alaska weather information line. Call that 24 hours a day. The National Weather Service does not stop working because it's a federal holiday. I'm here, and so are many other folks here, happy and willing uh, to help you stay safe and enjoy your Alaska weather, no matter what part of Alaska you're in. Now, make sure you click on weather.gov slash Alaska for your latest weather information. If you haven't bookmarked mobile, Dot weather dot gov. That's M-O-B-I-L-E dot weather dot gov. Try that on your phone or your uh, tablet and uh, put that on your home page and just type in your village or your community and you'll be able to get your latest weather forecast in a smaller, faster, more downloadable uh, version of the forecast there rather than just going to the big web page there. If you can't find what you're looking for, whether it's aviation, tsunami, fire weather, or just general weather information or even marine weather, make sure you email me, david.snyder at noaa.gov and I'm uh, pleased to serve you any way I can. Here's a look at the hazardous weather across Alaska. Really, the biggest thing going right now is the strong winds following the first of two fronts moving through. This front's going to be fairly slow to pass through, so the wind's coming in behind it and will stay fairly strong from the west-northwest uh, up to about 50 miles per hour, probably through about noon tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, during tonight and early tomorrow morning, they'll be at their strongest. After that, conditions should start to improve as this front weakens and moves a little bit further off to the east but uh, strong winds high wind warning now for the eastern beaufort sea coast as we go through noontime tomorrow so early july a fairly windy and cold period there rain and fog will be fairly likely as well yesterday had some thunderstorms as that was passing through today we're looking at the fire danger across the interior again and uh, you'll notice that high fire danger extends all the way across the middle and upper yukon the upper tananaw valley through the middle Tanana Valley and into even the upper Kuskokwim Valley. South Central looking at that around the Susitna Valley and into the western side of Anchorage and northern sections into the uh, Palmer region and then eastward into the Copper River Valley. A high fire danger exists there, of course. The upper Noatak, Kobuk areas and also the Koyukuk looking at high fire danger. But the worst spots really seem to be around the middle Tanana and the upper Yukon Valley there. So no big surprise based on what we've seen and the current fires that are being fought across our region today by uh, other uh, public servants across the region serving us on this 4th of July. So thank you to them. Stay safe, everybody, and also you stay safe with fire. If you've got some uh, questions about should you be burning, you can call a local fire official or your community official there that helps to protect and serve your area and, and just ask them the question, is today a good day to burn? You can also check uh, fire conditions there anytime by heading to fire.ak.blm.gov and you'll get more information about uh, your Alaska state of preparedness there for fire conditions. As we look at the satellite picture across the region, this is the visible channel, and this is what it would look like if you're in outer space looking down on Alaska. And you can see low pressure here across the south and western Bering Sea. That's really one of the big controlling features, but high pressure is still in charge of parts of the northern Bering Sea, and that's keeping things generally quiet across the region. As we look at this fourth, you'll notice southeast is generally sunny. There are clouds, low clouds out across the central and eastern gulf. South central has some high thin clouds passing through, but generally a fair weather day. And in these places here, temperatures are soaring. Uh, we were looking at temps in the upper 70s and 80s yesterday, a record-setting day across many parts of the Gulf Coast, including Anchorage and out toward parts of southeast. Just a broiler. As we look at Wednesday on the uh, infrared channel here, you can see that wave of weather working in from the Arctic. That's been producing clouds, rainfall, drizzle, and some high winds once again, as that's been squeezing that air right over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. You can also see a channel of moisture here across south central into the Gulf. Most of this is just stratus. And then we have our ball of cold weather here across the Bering Sea. That low pressure system continues to generally drift to the north and northeast as colder air is moving south. So we're getting the big squeeze here across the Bering Strait. That's producing some areas of light rainfall at times across uh, Norton Sound, but it's also creating some low clouds and stratus and fog around the Bering Sea. So don't be surprised you'll see more of that. Uh, in the meantime, we're also looking at some rainfall across the YK Delta, uh, looking at some shower and thunderstorm activity. It's been firing up early this afternoon around McGrath and north and east, so watch for more of that. So far, most of the storm activity across the region, though, has been in British Columbia. As this wave slowly moves southward, wouldn't be a shocker to see an isolated storm or two pop up across southeast as we head through the evening and overnight hours. 
As we look at the north, there's that front working across the northern coast. Fog behind it, high pressure in front of it at 1,025 millibars. Our slug of rain across the YK Delta, generally dry, sunny, fair weather conditions all the way around the northern and eastern Gulf this afternoon. Tonight, watch for areas of smoke across the interior once again as the temperatures cool off just a little bit off the surface of the earth. That's going to help to trap some of that uh, smoke a little bit closer to the ground where we're living and breathing, of course, and so you'll see more of that. Look for rain and some showers across the Alaska Range into south and west. I would be surprised to see a snowflake or two mixed in around uh, the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, Cactovic, westward toward Prudhoe Bay, but most of that uh, will be rainfall. Showers and light rainfall across the central and western Bering Sea. As we get into your Thursday, back to work we go. Showers and thunderstorms across the eastern Alaska Range and some light rainfall and some fog across the Bristol Bay community. Still pretty dry across the north and eastern Gulf, and you're still looking at a decent amount of sunshine for Juneau out toward Sitka, southward toward Petersburg. Looks like Heidelberg could pick up a little bit of rainfall there. Maybe Craig and Klawak if this shifts a little bit further to the west. Ketchikan probably in for some showers. Fog and stratus across the Chukchi coast through Barrow and Utkiavik and Nunavak Island. As you head out west, rain and some light drizzle probably uh, the order of the day. As we get into Friday, low pressure is strengthening, so that number is going down from about 996 to about 990, and that means we're looking at some small crafts at least, probably some low to mid-end gales for parts of the central and western chain as that westerly wind kicks in. Watch for the winds to come up across Nikolsky to Unalaska and Dutch Harbor with rain and drizzle in your forecast for the daytime tomorrow. Probably some fog as well. That's going to approach St. Paul and St. George. High pressure sitting around the Yukon Delta and just south of St. Lawrence Island, that's still going to chip away at a large portion of the clouds, so it may be a little bit cooler across some parts there, not the big heat that you've seen, but it will keep the air fairly stable across the region. Now across southeast, watch for a few more clouds, and under a few more of those clouds, even fewer amounts of showers, so still a generally nice day to wrap up the week. Low pressure sitting outside of Prince William Sound won't be much to write home about. It will stir up a few clouds, of course, in the afternoon. Let's take a look at temperatures for tomorrow morning. You'll get back to work uh, with readings back in the lower to mid-50s as you start your day. 54 in Kodiak, about 50 for Cold Bay, False Pass. And uh, well, as you get into southeast, low to mid-50s for you. Uh, Haines and Skagway in the mid-50s, about the same for the capital city. But temps are below that 40-degree mark north of the Brooks Range, 32 around Barrow and Wainwright for your daytime tomorrow. Thursday afternoon, 30s and 40s there, 60s and 70s for many parts of the interior from Eagle and Northway all the way out toward McGrath and Bethel. Temps there, uh, fairly mild. Nunavak Island, McCorick looking at 53. Uh, 70s once again on tap for most of southeast. Kodiak Island, 65. 50s and 60s for the Alaska Peninsula. Sand Point about 60 degrees. St. Paul, 49. Down to 45 in the morning there, south central. Kenai, Soldatna as you head down toward, uh, uh, looks like, uh, Homer and Seward, closer to 50 degrees in the morning. Cordova and uh, Whittier, probably looking at temperatures closer to 50 degrees, upper 40s around Fairbanks, up toward Fort Yukon, and mid-30s for the North Slope. High temperatures for your Friday to wrap up the holiday week. 60s for southeast, uh, upper 70s to about 80 in south central. The interior also pushing that 80 degree mark and warming up for the North Slope. 40s and 50s expected for your Friday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, IFR conditions will continue across the north slope. You'll see some breaks along the Brooks Range, but don't look for anything very substantial. As we look out west, the Bering Sea will continue to be under IFR conditions for most areas, and some lower areas out toward the coast may see some of that reaching inland a little bit, especially around the Kuskokwim Delta and uh, in the lower Cusco itself. Along the Alaska Peninsula, most of the chain starting out with IFR, and you'll see IFR approaching the northern and eastern Gulf Coast as we go, as well as parts of the central and western Alaska range for your Thursday morning. By the afternoon, don't be surprised to see some convection developing across the central and eastern Alaska range. It may not be very widespread, but you may see a couple towers forming there, perhaps as far south as the Talkeetnas, but right now it doesn't look like most of south central will have a major thunderstorm impact for your Thursday. So sticking out with a generally uh, a somewhat less active day, I guess, than what we were looking at yesterday. IFR conditions across the central and northern parts of the Gulf. Notice southeast still looking pretty good. VFR conditions through most of the region. IFR lingering across the north and western Arctic coast and 
IFR still covering most of the Bering Sea, but pulling out away from the west and southwest coast just a little bit. Of course, that creeps back in as we head into Friday morning. MVFR conditions sneaking up through the Bering Strait just outside of Kotzebue Sound. IFR all the way from Wainwright all the way around the coast through Prudhoe Bay and Kaktovik. IFR is moving northward as well with lower ceilings and visibility across some parts of the northern and eastern Gulf Coast. And you'll start to see a little more MVFR sneaking into parts of southeast. That fills in a little bit more by the afternoon on Friday for the central and southern inner channels. IFR conditions continue across the Gulf. A spotty IFR around St. Lawrence Island and into Norton Sound just west of Unilakleet. And then south and west of Nunavak Island and of course covering up once again all of the Bering Sea for Friday afternoon, including St. Paul and St. George. Here's your pass conditions in detail. Then as we get into Anaktuvik Pass, look for a start around IFR. Improvements should be seen as we go through the day. Similar conditions are expected around Adigan Pass. Pardon me, that should say IFR to uh, VFR conditions. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, we expect to see IFR starting out the morning there with great improvements by the afternoon. So flying uh, westward or eastward through the pass shouldn't have a whole lot of trouble. Rainy Pass, we expect an IFR start and uh, maybe some shower or thunderstorm activity developing to the east, but again, that should be pretty spotty. Uh, Windy Pass, looking at a marginal start, but improvements expected there through your Thursday afternoon. Isabel Pass, also expected to see a uh, decent improvement throughout the day. A better chance of convection in this region and north and east. And then Tasta Pass, we expect to see uh, visual flight rules continue through most of your Thursday. Tanita Pass looking pretty good, certainly by the afternoon. Portage Pass looks pretty good. Marginal conditions will be found, especially on the eastern side. VFR conditions should prevail by the afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Pass right now looking really good as we get into your Thursday. Up north, you can see the impacts of that latest wave moving from northwest to east across the Arctic coast. The freezing levels have dropped way down, down to about two to 4,000 feet. As we get into the interior, that's having at least some impact. The levels are falling to about six to 8,000 feet. And even further south, the levels are still holding, but they've dropped a little bit, and now around 10 to about 12,000 feet. Southeast running between about 10 to 12,000 feet. Most of the bearing holding between 8 to 10,000 feet. The west coast about uh, 10 or maybe a little bit lower there between uh, Norton Sound and into southwest. But uh, that, that northern runner there certainly having a little bit of a cooling effect. Icing potential is pretty sparse out there. Most of what you'll find is well above 10,000 feet, so I would say the risk is pretty low. And what we do see is only isolated moderates, so uh, no great risk out there, but do watch for some convection again tomorrow afternoon around the Alaska range. Our jet stream is showing some changes here. We've got a pretty decent push coming in from the Pacific. That's coming in from the west, slowing down as it moves into Alaska. Pretty decent trough across the Gulf of Alaska. And then here's our cooler impact coming off the pole. That's what's sending those freezing levels down across the north slope. A broad westerly flow at 9,000 feet, levels between about 10 and 30 knots or so, so not terribly fast. Uh, westerly flow into the Gulf, wrapping around a weak area of low pressure. Light southerlies into southeast, and again, westerlies over the mainland. A south and westerly flow strengthening across the central and western chain. And at 3,000 feet, you can see that's really starting to pick up closer to low pressure just off your screen. 20 to as high as 45 knots there. A ridge of high pressure pushing up the west coast with the high anchored up across the Chukchi Sea. Light winds coming from the north and west across western Alaska, light winds over the mainland, and light onshore flow across southeast. This ridge here uh, will be moving eastward with time. Turbulence potential as we head into your Thursday, pretty limited. There may be some thumps and bumps across the eastern Brooks Range there in the vicinity of the high winds we're seeing across the North Slope today and tomorrow, and some considerable moderate just south and west of Kodiak. <laughs> Technology. It's the rhythm of our everyday life. We're more dependent on satellite and communication systems than at any other time in history. Disruptions can affect our economy and even our safety. To prepare for the effects of such events and minimize impacts, we need to look outside our atmosphere, some 93 million miles away, at a star we call the Sun. It's our main energy source. It warms the earth and grows our food. While the sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. 
And unlike Vegas, what happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun, uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, space weather forecasters will issue a watch. This is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth. And we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. GPS has changed society. Most people don't realize how remarkable and how many different applications there are. The GPS has become an integral part, not just of our daily lives as far as cell phones and guidance for our cars and mapping, but the whole uh, system in agriculture is really relying heavily on high accuracy GPS. So they're using GPS to plant those seeds with centimeter accuracy and then they can come behind it and, and irrigate and fertilize right where that seed is with that one centimeter accuracy. The GPS creates a line for the operator that he can steer along or you go to another level 
and the operator doesn't steer anymore and the tractor has an automatic steering system on it, much like a cruise control on a car, except for when I push the button, it doesn't drive a set speed. When I push a button, it stays on a predefined line. You don't even need lights. You can do it at nighttime. You program your GPS and it's driving that tractor for you. So it's, uh, it's huge and it's changing the way that the farmers farm the fields. Six or seven days out. There's an interest in GPS applications from the space weather side because when the sun is eruptive, it causes GPS to falter and in some cases it doesn't work at all. Productivity may suffer to a certain degree in that there's no way that I as a human being can steer as good eight hours a day as a, a GPS system is going to do. It's going to be the same all day long. Some of the other application technologies those are going to be gone. We're not going to have the ability to do good section control on sprayers and planters and fertilizer applicators without GPS. We see a huge growing customer base in so many different industries, so many different sectors now relying on GPS and high precision GPS. They're all big customers for us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a look at your sea ice edge on this 4th of July. And you'll notice not a whole lot's changed. Kind of zoom the picture in for you today a little bit so you could see some of the detail around Barrow out toward Wainwright. A lot of this is in the marginal ice zone. That means concentrations of ice below or at 80%. The white areas are above 80%. So this is where most of the pack ice is. Some of this is still fairly thick well north of the Beaufort Seacoast itself. So it's going to take a long time to really cut this back. But we are seeing some changes here across the Beaufort Seacoast itself and some pockets of marginal ice developing west of Prudhoe Bay and just to the north and west of Cactowic. For the very latest information, 365 days a year. Head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Check out the concentration and the thickness. Both of those really have an important role to play together. And you can also check out the forecast through the rest of the week as well as the seasonal outlook there as you're making your planning uh, for the North Slope uh, deliveries there. So anytime you want, weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Here's a look at Juno's forecast. Winds are going to stay fairly light. There's some areas that are going to see slightly stronger winds, maybe a few small craft advisories here across the outer coast. Uh, the Lynn Canal looking at a southerly flow up to 15 knots, two to three foot seas in the entire region. Not too bad at all, but it gets better for your Friday. Look at that. 10 to 15 knots in all areas. Two to three foot seas on the inside and generally light and somewhat variable flow across the outer coast. Four to five foot seas there, a little bit higher up, but that's, you know, the Gulf Coast. And uh, by and large, it looks like fair weather continues in most places through Friday. So, wow, are you living right in southeast or what? Enjoy it, be safe, and happy fourth to you. South Central, light winds inside of Prince William Sound, small seas as well, a fisher person's delight. South and westerly flow across the north and western Gulf, 15 to 25 knots there. Slightly stronger winds, and well, considerably stronger winds across the Barrens, anywhere from 25 to 30 knots, seven to eight foot seas there. And the seas pick up even more, probably looking at some areas anywhere from 10 to maybe 13 foot seas as you get east of the Barrens. So be careful if you're headed that way. North and westerly is coming across Cook Inlet, 10 to 15, two to four foot seas on Thursday. And once again, small seas, light winds, generally variable flow on Friday, not bad at all. Uh, the fair weather continues inside of Prince William Sound. Be careful, enjoy it, have a wonderful day if you're heading out on the water on Friday. North and northwesterly is around Cook Inlet. Great fishing there, I'm sure, in Kashemak Bay and uh, south of Kenai. Oh man, wish I could be out there with you. Enjoy it, catch one for me. Here's a look at the Bristol Bay region now. Westerly is a little bit stronger there, 20 knots, three foot seas, 15 to 20 knot winds across the north and western Gulf. Uh, east of Akiak, notice the winds picking up here coming off the Alaska Peninsula and off Kodiak Island, 20 to 25 knots, 6 to 8 foot seas, 6 foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait, 25 knots with a decent westerly flow. It's going to be a little choppy out there for your day on Thursday. Does it get better on Friday? Eh, a little bit. Not quite as good as what we saw off to the east. Maybe head east if you can. 15 to 20 knots across the region on Friday. 
Uh, you're looking at four foot seas inside of Shilakoff Strait up toward Raspberry Island, five to six foot seas south of Akiak to east of Kodiak Island, and south and westerly is a little lighter, three to five foot seas on either side of Sandpoint, Cold Bay, and False Pass. So watch for some improvement there as that ridge of high pressure is still in control. For the Aleutians, not too shabby, 15 to 20 knots in most areas. You're looking at 10 knots south of Nikolsky, six foot seas there, three to four foot seas, even five foot seas north of Nikolsky from Unalaska all the way westward, ADAC, and then you get into the return flow feeding into low pressure coming into uh, the North Pacific there, 15 to 25 knots with a six foot sea, and then some bigger changes on Friday. The winds start to come up, the seas coming up, you're looking at about 10 to 15 foot seas developing south of the western chain, uh, 30 knot winds there, 25 to 30 knots across the central and eastern chain as you get into Friday. So watch for ch continued changes into the weekend. For the west coast, light onshore flow. If you get offshore flow, the coastal villages are going to be broiling with this heat. So stay cool out there, my friends. Two to three foot seas expected across the west. North and westerlies into St. Matthew and St. Paul and St. George. Three foot seas expected for Thursday. Not a big change on Friday. Still looking at light winds around the Kuskokwim Delta up toward Norton Sound. Two to three foot seas there. But you get that southeast flow developing from St. Matthew all the way down toward the Pribilovs and expect a three to four foot sea on that 20 knot wind. The north slope looking at stronger westerly flow. Remember that high wind warning around the eastern Beaufort Seacoast, 40 knots there. That's for Thursday. Uh, generally light winds across the Bering Strait communities, 15 to 25, three to five foot seas on Thursday, a general south flow on Friday, southwesterly stronger for the Chukchi coast, and westerly is diminishing, but still up there, kind of brisk for the Prudhoe Bay and Kaktovik regions over the ice for your Friday. Recapping tonight's weather, you're going to see some smoke in the interior, a mixture of some light rain and snow across the north coast, otherwise showers and light rain across the Alaska range out toward the west. As we get into Thursday, a few showers or storms across the higher terrain, and then pleasant again on Friday. <music> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.